the second segment of the show for today. The topic is the economic benefit of international or foreign students to the economy of Tennessee as well as the uh, United States. And of course, Dr. Madhu has given us quite a bit of information in reference to that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Madhu, let's pick up where we left off because I think some of the figures that you're given uh, are very, very intriguing and probably some figures that we never thought about before. Go mm -hmm. on and talk about it from that perspective. Yeah, like I, like I said before, the five countries, you know, uh, top the list of countries that send foreign students to the United States. Like, like, like I said, China is number one, India second, uh, South Korea third, Canada fourth, Taiwan fifth, Saudi Arabia sixth, Nigeria is 18th, like I said, with 7,000. You know. Among the schools that have the largest number of foreign students, University of Southern California is number one, you know, with 8,000 students, almost 9,000. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, University of Illinois, you know, Urbana Champaign, with about 7,000 students, you know. Then you have uh, New York University. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Indiana. Mm -hmm. Then you have Columbia University in New York. These five, you know, top the list mm -hmm. of most of the foreign students in the United States. Mm -hmm. In Tennessee, uh, Vanderbilt, University of Tennessee in Knoxville, mm -hmm. uh, University of Memphis, East Tennessee State University, mm -hmm. and Tennessee Technological University have the largest number. You know, foreign students in Tennessee, and like I said before, four, five countries produce most of the foreign students in Tennessee: mm -hmm. uh, China, India, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. Malaysia, mm -hmm. Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Most of the students here. Tennessee State University uh, has about 159, 159 foreign mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. uh, UT and Vanderbilt over a thousand, you know, mm -hmm. each. Mm -hmm. Last, you know, this. Uh, fiscal year, from what I saw, TSU alone pumped six hundred and ten million dollars, mm. you know, into the economy. Just foreign students alone from that? No, from just the, the whole university mm -hmm. pumped about six hundred and ten million dollars into the Tennessee economy, mm -hmm. and out of that, about five million really is from foreign students, mm -hmm. you know, tuition and you name it, every other thing. So it's not it's not insignificant. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Like, like most people think. Mm -hmm. Now, the states with the largest numbers of foreign students, uh, California tops the list, you know, number one. Uh, New York comes next. Texas is third. Massachusetts mm -hmm. is fourth. And then uh, Illinois is fifth. Then on and on. Wyoming and Vermont has the smallest numbers, mm -hmm. with about a thousand, mm -hmm. you know, in their states. Mm -hmm. And of course, because of you know the weather and the where they are yeah, located, yeah, they are yeah, all that very good mm -hmm. contributes to a lot of those things, mm -hmm. and you can see that most of the students, foreign students, are concentrated in states, mm -hmm. you know, in in states that have large urban areas, mm -hmm. you know, and it's no coincidence uh, because most of these universities are located near or, mm -hmm. you know, large in, urban exactly centers, exactly mm -hmm. large urban urban centers. Mm -hmm. So most of them are concentrated there. Now with the HBCU universities, they have not done quite well in the number of foreign students. Uh, Howard University is a, is a, is a, has the largest number of uh, foreign students with about 1,000 to 1,300, you know, and the rest mm -hmm. are very, very low. And I think one of the reasons is probably most of those schools have not been very aggressive Mm. You know, and in, recruiting, in recruiting mm -hmm. foreign students. Mm -hmm. I know TSU did a very good job in a few years ago mm -hmm. when uh, Dr. Hefner was president in mm -hmm. aggressively pursuing mm -hmm. foreign students mm -hmm. and also building partnerships, mm -hmm. you know, with, with foreign universities. Mm -hmm. Now, there are about 250,000 American students studying abroad mm -hmm. on uh, what you call the foreign, you know, Ex foreign exchange, exactly, and foreign mm -hmm. exchange program, mm -hmm. about 250,000. About a quarter of a million. Exactly, uh -huh. studying, studying mm -hmm. in foreign countries. Mm -hmm. Now, out of 25 countries, 13 are not, you know, in Europe of these countries where mm -hmm. foreign students, you know, students from the U.S. go to study overseas. However, the first four 
countries that top the list where American students go to study mm -hmm. are in Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, England, Britain is mm -hmm. number one. Then you have uh, France, Italy, mm -hmm. Spain. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you know, you have other countries, particularly in Asia, mm -hmm. you know, South Korea and all these take, take over. Mm -hmm. In Africa, the only country really where most American foreign exchange students go to South Africa. So, uh -huh. it, has, yeah, it has the largest number, mm -hmm. you know, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the universities in South Africa are quite probably the best mm -hmm. on the continent mm -hmm. of Africa, you know, like uh, University of Cape Town, Whitwater Strand University, Stellenbosch. These are, these are viewed as Harvard, you know, of, oh, sa of mm -hmm. South Africa. Mm -hmm. So a lot of foreign students, you know, foreign exchange students from the U.S., prefer to go to South Africa if they're going to Africa, mm -hmm. you know, for foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. So these schools, these countries are where most of our students go to. Mm -hmm. Now, statistically or demographically, mm -hmm. where do they come from? Of all the American students who are foreign exchange students, mm -hmm. you know, study abroad students, 78% are white. Mm -hmm. Then about six point some percent Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Then about four point something, you know, it's African American. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see the disparity there mm -hmm. in, 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 you know, the foreign exchange program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I hope or wish, you know, that more Latinos and African American students, you know, will go, mm -hmm. you know, overseas uh, to, to study. Mm -hmm. You know, at the same time, build partnerships mm -hmm. with some of these universities, particularly those in Africa, mm -hmm. with HBC universities. Mm -hmm. you know. So what do they study? The foreign students who come here, the three different fields of study predominate their, their majors. Mm -hmm. uh, business and management, mm -hmm. you know, number one. I have uh, computer sciences mm -hmm. and math, mm -hmm. and then you have engineering. Mm -hmm. These three top, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the academic pursuits here. Of the Americans who are on the study abroad program, it's kind of the reverse. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Even though business also tops it, but then in the middle you have uh, social sciences. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of them go over there to like to study the culture of the mm -hmm. people and you know all those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very important, mm -hmm. you know, to. Uh, Dr. Blue, let us take this uh, second commercial break and then we'll get back. But that's the information that we're looking mm -hmm. for. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Mm -hmm. Topic is the economic benefit.